Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I'm making a Christmas gift box. I'm using the gorgeous Graphic 45 papers. I'm using the Twas the Night Before Christmas, and I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, a closer look at this paper collection. This is just gorgeous papers. If you've not used Graphic 45, you should really give it a try. Their papers are so great to work with. They're very thick, but they're not too thick that you can actually fold them without them cracking. So I love working with Graphic 45. So as you can see, the paper collection has tons of things that you can fussy cut out. They, have, they come with tags and cutouts. They also have strips, border strips. And here's some more cutouts. And now I'm trying to decide what I want to use for the base of my box, the bottom of my box, and the top of the box. Um, I end up choosing a A side, which is going to be the busier side for the top of my box, and one of the B sides, that red there, which is a little bit more of a muted pattern for the bottom of the box. And now I'm just going to cut off the manufacturer strip. I want to keep the bottom of the box piece at 12 by 12, and that paper is bundle of toys. So now I'm going to score this at four inches on all sides. And you'll see me score it twice because the paper is a little bit thick. So I'm scoring it twice. I'm going to turn it once, score it at four inches, turn it, four inches, turn it, and again, four inches. Here I'm trying to show you the score marks, which are really hard to see on this paper. But again, it's four inches on all sides. Now I want to cut each of these right in between those score marks up to the next score mark, which is four inches. Then I'm going to skip, I'm going to turn it once, just like I did, skip one of the score marks and cut the other side, using my ruler as a guide up to the four inches. I don't want to go over that score line. Then I'm going to turn it once again and do the same thing cutting right along that score line, and then one more time. And as you'll see, we've cut every other one up to the score line. So now I want to fold in on all my score lines just to give it a good crease using my bone folder. And now you can sort of see the box coming together. I'm just going to pull up my sides and adhere them. I'm just looking at which way it looks better. And I'm going to use some Scotch Quick Dry. You can use tape or, or whatever you'd like. I like to use wet glue because it gives me a little bit longer to move it around if I need to. Because you really want to make sure that those corners are lined up perfectly. Once you do, then give it a good press to make sure that it's completely sealed. So again, I'm adding glue up to the score line, but not over the score line, lining it up, pressing it down, and then really giving it a good press. And I'll do that with my last two sides here. You just want to make sure that all the corners line up and all the tops line up. So that's why I check it before I actually glue it down to make sure it, it's lining up correctly or if I need to adjust it in any way, but it usually lines up perfectly. So now I'm adhering my last side down, and as you can see, that's a four inch box. So it's four inches tall and four inches square as well. So that's a pretty nice size box that you can fit quite a bit of stuff in. And I just, again, love this paper so much. So now I want to make the lid. And what I had decided, this is Happy Holly Day. What I decided is the box is four inches. So I need to make the lid one eighth inch wider. And then I want to make the sides one inches each. So I, I'm going to cut my paper at six and one eighth. That gives me the one eighth inch larger on the lid and one inches on either side. So again, I'm cutting that at six and one eighth inch square, and then I'm going to score it one inches at one, the one inch mark on all sides. So I'm scoring it at one inch, turning it, one inch, turning it, 
one inch turning it. And here you'll be able to see a better look at the score marks. Again, that's one inches on all sides. So now we want to cut, same thing we're doing, however, we're gonna cut it a little different. We're cutting right up to that score line and then we're cutting out a little notch, just the littlest bit. It's a little triangle that you're taking out. And you wanna do that so there's less bulk when you fold it. So we're gonna do two on the same side, the exact same way, give it a little bit of a V, flip it all the way around and do the same on the opposite side. Again, giving it that little bit of a V. So now you'll have them the exact same on the opposite side. The difference on the bottom is we did every other score mark. This one we did the two score marks and then the two across from each other. And now again, the same thing, we're going to fold on all those score marks and glue the corners together. And I like to glue those tabs on the inside just because it gives it a, a cleaner finished look. Again, using some Scotch Quick Dry. This is a really quick process. And I just love the results of this. I love giving gifts inside of a handmade box. So I'm just making sure to get glue on all the corners there because I want it to glue down nicely, putting all the tabs on the inside of the box. And here I'm just showing you that I'm adding glue completely on that tab. Now I'm just going around making sure all of them are nice and tight and it fits on there perfectly. So now I know that I want to do a belly band for around the box, so I'm just kind of looking at my patterns. And there's some strips you can cut out, but I wanted something to stand out a little bit more. So I end up deciding on this, it's towards the night before Christmas. And I'm cutting one inch strips. I'm cutting two of them. I couldn't decide. I was looking if I wanted two inch, but I went with the one inch strips because one is not going to be long enough to go around the entire box. So I go ahead and cut two of them down. Cutting off the manufacturer strip or strip. And now I'm going to adhere them together just using a little bit of ATG tape. I'm just lining that up the best that I can. And now I want where it meets to go right in the middle because I know I'll be covering that up. So I just bent it around my box to get the creases and now I'm reinforcing those creases with my stylus and my scoreboard. That way it, it, it gives it a nice crease going around the box. And then I'll fold on those creases just to make it easier. And now I'll just kind of wrap it around and mark it with a pencil where I need to cut it. And I'm pulling out my um, cutting board because I can get a perfect cut that way. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't get a straight line cutting it by hand. So now I will go ahead and add some adhesive on that. And that, makes, that forms my belly band to go around my box, which I can remove on and off. That way, the recipient can open up their box and close it again. So now I'm cutting out one of the tags from the collection. And these are super cute tags. I love that they're double sided. And I'm going to ink the edges with vintage photo distress ink and a blending tool. I'm using my Big Bite to cut out the center of that and add a little bit of crochet twine. 
So I'm just putting that through the tag and pulling the strings up through that. So now I am using the Dynamics Scrolly Deer. This is an absolute gorgeous die and it'll, it'll cut out um, lightweight chipboard. So that's what I'm using here, some lightweight chipboard. I'm putting it with the cut side up, then my lightweight chipboard, then my cutting mat and my extra, or my cutting plate and my extra plate. And I'm running through that through several times, which by doing so, it gives it a perfect cut. Just taking out the little extra pieces there. And now I'm going to use some Versamark pigment ink and some ultra thick embossing enamel in gold. I'm just going to ink that up. It's a sticky ink, so you can use embossing powders with it. And I will then heat set that with my, my um, heat gun. I'm putting a, a heat resistant mat under it so it doesn't warp my cutting mat. And I like to get my heat tool a little bit hot before holding it to the embossing powder. And I just love when that heats up. It gives it such a, a thick, bubbled look almost. And on this deer, it just looks gorgeous. There's a little bit closer look at that deer. So these are some sprays I got from Michaels, I think last year that um, the leaves I got last year over in their flower section. And this little poinsettia flower I got this year at Michaels. So I'm using some wire cutters and cutting that off. And this leaf was so big, I decided to cut it in half so I could use one on either side. And looking at my tag, I want it just a little bit smaller. So I just cut off um, a little bit. I wasn't measuring or anything. I just cut off a little off both sides and the bottom. And I will go ahead and re-ink re those edges. I was happier with the tag being a little bit smaller on that box. And now I'm adhering the tag down directly onto the belly band so everything can be removed. I'm making sure that it's not gluing it to the lid. And again, just using hot glue, I'm adhering that right to the belly band. Now here are some sprays that I also got from Michael. I thought the silver went perfect with it. So I'm just going to tuck in a little at the top and on the other side as well. Here is the word Believe by Tim Holtz. I don't have the packaging for it, um, but he has some Christmas words currently out and the font is just gorgeous. So I'm using that same lightweight chipboard and doing the exact same process with the gold enamel. I wanna show you here that there are little release um, circles. I'm lightly pressing with my piercing tool. I'm not pushing too hard because I don't wanna press it and, and cause holes in it. I'm just helping it to release from the die. So again, this is the word believe and it's the Tim Holtz. I will have links to all these products that I've used from Cut It Home in the description box below. And it will also be listed on their blog as well. So I'm going to ink that again in Versamark and add the same gold and um, embossing powder to it. I will, after heat setting this again, letting my heat tool to warm up a little bit first, 
I will adhere that to my tag as well. And that's really all there was to it. It's just ready to have a cute little gift be added to it. And until then, I will set it under my tree to look pretty until I give it away. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It's super simple. I hope you give it a try. All the product codes will be listed in the description box below. And check out Cut at Home's blog. There's lots of inspiration and more details on the blog. So the links will be in the description box. Stay tuned for some detailed photos. Thanks for watching.